authority because it's really a, a civics lesson here. Uh, the uh, acting attorney general, Yates, uh, refused to honor the president's uh, executive order on those seven countries and those people are coming here. Uh, she's gone. Uh, the spokesman for the president the other day made it pretty clear that those State Department officials, the career people over there, uh, 900 of them apparently that signed that petition, should basically get out of there if, they, if they're not happy with the way things are going. They should he get out of there. He gave a choice. He said no, they no, can but they sort of step up or get but out. In other words, if you don't agree with the president and you work for the United States government, you shouldn't be there. Well, Chris, what we're no, saying... No, really, that's what he's saying. Well, I believe what our press secretary meant by that is what he said, which is you know, every president has a right, really has the right to surround himself with a team that's going to work with him and not against him. And there's been a lot of grandstanding this last week, as you know. Yeah, but civil, and civil servants swear their oath to the Constitution. They take a job for life in these career positions. And then, and then sign a petition saying that they're not, that going, they're not going to discharge. Their, their oath was that they would discharge they, their they duties. They didn't say they would discharge. They said he disagreed with a major well, issue. Okay, they disagreed with him on a and major they issue. Leave? And they disagree with him on a major issue. And what does that mean? Are they effective in their post? In other words, what Sean Spicer said was, should step up or, or step aside. I mean, it's a choice some of them will have to make. We'd appreciate the lack of leaking. Our, our new Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, who's an amazing, amazing choice, he'll go down as one of the best yeah. Secretary of States, I promise you. He just said today, uh, his first day on the job at State, he said, uh, Brace for big changes, and he means it. This is, you know, this is a new administration, and everybody knew what they were getting. Sure, I know that. With but President Trump, Kellyan, we've had people, you might say, progressives, liberals, whatever. You can say people who didn't like Richard Nixon served under him for six years or so, his whole presidency. Uh, you had people served under Reagan who didn't agree with did them. Did they sign petitions? Well, they apparently did they did know because what they the were petition, petition began back in the Vietnam War. Do you think if you serve the protesters, they know well, what they're protesting? Okay, let's go to the principal presidential authority. Does a president have a right to insist that people who work for the federal government agree with him? Does he have the right to insist? Insist that they agree with him. Well, he has a right to form a team and a, and a no, government. No, I'm talking about the public service, the civil service. But agree with him on what? In other words, it's not, it's not agree with him. You make it sound like do they agree with him personally. He's the president, and he is enacting policy on behalf of a nation. And on, in this case, he is calling for extreme vetting from seven countries that President Obama first identified. Right. All he did was take his lead. He didn't even add to the list. Yeah. It's the seven countries that were previously identified right. by President Obama as being high risk, as being states that either harbor train or export and or export terrorism. These are, these are nations very narrowly prescribed and also temporary. Sure. Um, I, I bet there was very little coverage. I bet, I bet it's brand new information to people that President Obama had a six-month ban on the Iraqi refugee program after two Iraqis came here to this country, mm. were radicalized, and there were the master, masterminds behind the Bowling Green Massacre. Well, I mean, most people don't know that because it didn't get covered. Let's talk about the major strategic goal this administration oversees, and here as well to eradicate radical Islamic terrorism. And how does that fit with uh, the executive order on those seven countries? How does the getting rid of, eradicating, that's the term the president uses, radical Islamic terrorism, how do we achieve that goal by restricting in, in, uh, immigration from those seven countries? What's well, you partly, achieve, you partly achieve it. achieve it, but that goal is much broader than any one executive order. This was a centerpiece of... Well, how do they connect? The candidate's team will be a, a centerpiece of his presidency. They connect in this way. You can't just look at what's happened in Orlando, in San Bernardino, in Nice, Brussels, Paris, Germany, London. You can't look at that and, and avert your gaze in Turkey and look the other way and say, oh, you know, things happen. This man ran on a stronger and safer United States of America and, more important, just as importantly, Chris, protecting America, Americans, her interests and her allies here and abroad. What does that mean for ISIS? He has made, he has minced no words that he wants to eradicate. His word as recently as last yeah. week. He wants to eradicate radical Islamic terrorism. You know what? Most Americans and many people abroad agree with him because if we're just going to look the other way, and, and we have, we had, we had Hillary Clinton, the Democratic Party nominee, at her convention in our Philadelphia, refer to them not as radical Islamic terrorism, but as our, quote, determined enemies. I saw that in her prepared remarks. I thought, wow, we're really going to win this thing. Yeah. You, can't, you can't defeat something unless you're willing to call it what it is, name it what it is. And I remember President Obama very cavalierly saying at some point, well, who would it help? Or maybe some of his supporters said, who would it help? You know, what does it help calling it that? 
Well, it helps a great deal because when you name it, then people realize what you're actually fighting against. Terrorism today is never like it was when you and I were growing up. It is, it is cyber warfare. It is they they they, they radicalize people o online. There was no online when we were kids, and and they, they radicalize people online now. And what happens is what this extreme vetting does is the big thing it tries to prevent is people come here and then they go back and they're trained in these countries. My yeah. whole point: you're training, harboring, and then you're exporting terrorists back here. That's what happened. That's what happens and that's what happened in Europe that's what could happen here has happened here frankly and that's what should not happen again if you have a, a commander-in-chief and a president who's willing to stem that let alone eradicate it everybody should welcome that so this is about keeping a uh, radical Islamist terrorist out of the country yes and and well off the globe I mean yeah. they, they feel they seem emboldened and mm -hmm. you know look what they did in Turkey on on um, Christmas okay. Eve We're getting a signal here I got one uh, question um, there's been Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.